Hey guys, Thunderham369 here, back with a little video review. I know I've been gone for a few days now. I want to apologize for that. Today we're going to be taking a look at Marvel Transformers crossover Ghost Rider. Now, I was highly anticipating the release of this guy when I first heard the rumors of him. And I know a lot of people on these crossover figures. There are a lot of hit or miss on them. My favorite one to date is still the uh, Captain America Humvee. And if I hadn't already bought the Iron Man jet, I would have probably bought the Iron Man repaint of that Humvee. But one Iron Man is enough. So like I said, we're going to be taking a look at Ghost Rider today. And I picked this guy up at one of my local Walmarts just a couple of days ago about I want to say around about twelve thirteen dollars maybe fifteen at the most can't really remember and uh, like I said I was really highly anticipating the release of this guy but after getting it getting him in hand and fiddling with him for the past couple of days and I was kind of highly disappointed so we'll go ahead and take a look at his card here if you can see that Try to keep as much glare down as I can. It's got a nice little picture of his motorcycle mode through here. His robot mode here. Advertising the pop open buzz saw. Which is a disappointment in itself. I'll show you why when we get to him. And here's his data file right in the middle. And it says, uh, this battle suit was built specifically to take advantage of the magical energies that give Ghost Rider his powers. It is the perfect fusion of technology and sorcery, enhancing the arcane flame that Ghost Rider uses as a weapon. And down here you've got other figures that are available. You've got another Iron Man. Got another black suit, Spider-Man, which is just a repaint of the red and blue race car they released. And then you've got another Spider-Man in helicopter form. Another helicopter form Spider-Man. And you come around to the front, I want to point out it's got a nice little artwork of the movie version of Ghost Rider here, the movie motorcycle, which is what this design is supposed to be based on, but it doesn't even come close to that design within the front. So we'll go ahead and set this back out of the way. We'll take a look at motorcycle mode. As you can see, most major disappointing spot on it is his head. His head sits right on top of the gas tank. It doesn't open up, fold in, it doesn't do nothing. It just sits there, just plain as day. No detail for an engine. They could have at least put some kind of flame unit through here to try to disguise all this a little bit, but didn't even try to attempt that. And the back wheels are kind of separate. It's halves. It's got the nice little twin exhaust pipes on each side, but I've never seen a motorcycle have four exhaust pipes. I've seen two, never four. Front wheel rolls very well. This more or less is his arm in robot mode. You get a nice little articulation on the front fork out of that. And like I said, it sits great. I mean, it doesn't even... It sits perfect. I mean, you can shake a table. It don't fall over or nothing. It rolls decently. All except for these little two skulls which become his knee pads in robot mode they do hinder the rolling of the back wheel a little bit and then his chain attaches here wraps around the fork hooks in here and like I said hit advertised a pop out buzzsaw blade which all you do is you just push in on the lower part of the chain and it causes the blades to pop out but 
they don't pop out far enough to even really be considered to look like they pop out. I mean, they just pop out maybe not even a quarter of an inch, so that's kind of a disappointment. Got nice little detail to these flames back here, going from the yellow to the red to the orange. So, to get him into his robot mode is really quite simple. You just detach his chain. And the chain is just molded, one piece of molded plastic. Not a lot of detail to this at all. We set that to the side. And the transforming is really simple. You just fold all this down. Twist. Turn the waist. And you'll notice he sets to the side. Now this step is not in the instruction manual. After I looked at it, you slide this over. Straighten out his legs. Flip his feet up, separate his legs, and then you can just straighten out his arms. Then his head turns, just, and it's on a weird joint the way it sets it makes it set to the side. You kind of have to fiddle with it to get it straight in the middle. And his handlebars for his motorcycle, you can just take and flip them down in the front part. Now like I said, the, it's modeled after the movie version of the bike, but you'll notice, and if anybody knows anything about Ghost Rider, this is kind of modeled after the uh, Daniel Ketch style bike. Not exactly a skull head or anything, it's more the shield that he had. And on this arm you just flip the seat up on his forearm, bring his fist down, twist to the side, and there you basically have him in his robot mode. Not too much, it's a little bit more detail to him here. As you can see he's got nice little He's got a nice head sculpt. He really does have a nice face sculpt. If you can see that. Nice little sculpted flames. Got these nice little sculpted knee pads, which are skulls, which I like. I like that. But overall, I'm kind of disappointed with it, especially this arm. Just being that wheel. I mean, he stands very, very well. As far as his articulation, he's got a nice little detailed face, almost like a skull for his upper body. Nicely detailed. As far as his articulation, his head will go 360. And you can get some weird movements out of it. His arms will go out to the side, nice little clickety click. They will go full 360, but this shield kind of gets a little caught up on this spike right here on his waist. The elbow joint will rotate full 360. And that waist joint is a little fiddly at times, so he will go full 360 at the waist. His legs will come out to the side. It's almost like a T crotch, which is kind of weird. There's no ball joint. We'll go back, forward. Like I said, it's it's almost designed like a T crotch, but it's on some kind of pin style. And like I said, it's got these nice little skull knee pads and it will bend at the knee to there. Some feet articulation. His legs will go 360 at the upper upper calf. Get him all straightened 
got situated there. And the chain, like I said, is just, it can go, it just fits right in his fist there. You can get pretty much any kind of pose you want with the chain. And overall, do I recommend buying him? Only if you're trying to complete the set of all the crossovers. Only if you're trying to complete that set would I pick him up. But as far as recommending to pick him up, to be honest with you, if I had it to do all over again and knowing what he's got, I really wouldn't have picked him up. But to be honest with you, I'm a Ghost Rider fan, so I had to have him. But my recommendation is pretty much use your own use your own judgment. I mean, the arms disappointing, the head not hiding in motorcycle modes a disappointment. I mean, he does have nice articulation and everything. Can't complain about that. It's a nice paint job. There's no bleed overs or anything. But so, like I said, guys, just have to use your own judgment on this one. I just picked him up to go with my set, especially since he's Ghost Rider. I couldn't couldn't turn him down. So, there's my look at. So, guys, want to thank everybody for watching the video. That's been my look at Marvel Transformers crossover Ghost Rider. Till next time, guys. I'm out of here. See y'all.